Legend Talks. All right, everybody, this is your boy, King Legend 757, and I am sitting here at the Heroes Festival with the one and only Mix. Yes, sir. How are you feeling today, man? Tired, but wonderful. Man, it was a lot of stuff going on out there on that stage, and the energy you brought out there was amazing, bro. How do you have all of that stamina to do so much, like so many sets at one time? So actually, I practice by running or jogging or walking, <laughs> doing my set. Yeah. So when I get up there, I know where my breathing points is. Right. <laughs> so that's what all those videos were. So you was going to, you know, you was going to what? Yeah. That's what it was. You yep. practicing it? Yeah. Now it makes so much sense, bro. <laughs> that you definitely have the stamina to keep it going like that, man. And just seeing the response from the crowd, I feel like you can always tell when when the artist on stage is really performing well. Yeah. Um, and so. When it comes to your music, what is something that really drove you to Christian hip hop? Um, I don't think really anything drove me. I just always made music and I loved it. I mean, I think I was destined for it, to be honest, because I never really, when I used to listen to Break or Little OZ and them, I always would download the clean version. Right, <laughs> so right. I, it was something about the cursing, I just couldn't stand in my ear, even as an unbeliever. Yeah. Um, but when I gave my life, my music just sort of changed with my heart. So mm. it just. So as much as I pour into it, that's what kind of where I am with my walk with Christ. So. I think it's amazing. He said he used to download the clean version. I ain't never heard nobody say that before. That's the first <laughs> download the clean version. Now that's good, man. So it wasn't. Was it hard for you to transition? Like, did you ever cuss much before um, you got to Christian hip hop music? I mean, of course, it's hard to transition. I think always just like the flesh wants to do what the flesh wants to do, but it was just more. I found out the more I read my Bible and the more I devoted my time, just the easier it got to let go of that stuff. Absolutely. It's so important to actually be a doer and not just a hearer of the word. So applying it to your life like that is where you really see the transition during that sanctification process. A lot of people, they don't understand that, man. We have to really renew our minds. And through that process, it's a pruning season. And no, that, real. that don't feel like God whooping you behind, <laughs> no. but it's so you can produce more fruit. So can you share with us a time where you went through a pruning season in your life and where you can really see that God will try to reveal things in your heart that needed fiction? Um, I know one of the time I actually went through, I was a time I used to live in uh, Waldorf and we just got, you know, I got married and I was doing everything in the house that I was exhausted actually. I was very, very exhausted. Um, and I knew it. Um, everybody was irritating me, but I was putting on a smile and I was just walking it through. And I barely really remember this. I remember uh, my wife left, everybody left at the house. At the time, I had my um, some people living with me on our first year of marriage, and that just wasn't good. But right. I went to reach, I was cleaning the whole house. I went and reached under the bed, and then, like, I just couldn't get up. Like, I was stuck. Wow. And I think when I, you know, it was the ground, and when I got up off the ground, like, I tried to get up, and my body literally shut down. And, like, I just started crying. Now, I, I understand what you mean, because I had, like, a Charlie horse on my legs <laughs> when I was outside of the parking lot. And uh, there was a moment there, but I ain't cried up. I ain't <laughs> cried. But there was a moment there I thought about it, you know. <laughs> but just to see how um, God is working in your life right now, um, did you ever see this happening when you said yes to what the call was in your life? Um, no, actually. I just said the um, same thing happened, actually. I wish I had a nice story where God met me where I was at and I was smoking and God was just like, I got better for you. That wasn't me. I got called, actually. It yeah. was just like I woke up one day and the spirit hit me and it was just like everyone around me is going to die. Wow. So I, got home. so I couldn't eat. I had terrible anxiety for about like a month and then like I cleansed myself of everything and I fasted and he was like, okay, are you ready? So I was like, all right. Wow, man. So you fasted. Um, now, how important and crucial was that to your walk? Fasting is the key to being a successful Christian. Ooh, the key. That's bars. That's bars yeah. right there. Man, it's so important because people try to live this Christian life and not actually spend that much intimacy with the Father. Yeah. You know, like, how do we even think that that's possible to do it in that way, man? I think it's so important to really grow. You got to connect. 
You know, I don't know. Okay. If you, I don't know, if you're in a body of Christ and you're a leader and you tell me you don't fast, I think you just step down. I'm just like, who are you hearing from? Right. If it's not God, like, wait, if you're following you, yeah. I wouldn't want to follow me. So it's just like. That's fact. It's important to have that discipline of a believer, man, because we fight our flesh on a regular basis. The flesh is always going to be fighting the spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, they're never going to agree. And so we have to fast so we can build that spiritual discipline to deny the flesh and die to self. Mm-hmm. That's important. And a lot of people, they don't understand that the importance of that, it just, it's, it's essential to your walk as a believer. It, it really is. It is. You know, um, now with your music, the direction that it's going, is there anything new for the people? Um, an album is at works. An album is at works. But Recently, for uh, I wanted to change my whole music around, um, and it started with Equally Yoked. Ooh, okay. That was the first song where I was just like, okay, this is a hit. Like, non-believer or believer, right. I can't be messed with you if you, you wild and out. So I was just like, but I want to incorporate that in all aspects of my music. I'm gonna take, I want my album just to be as good as Drake's J. Cole or Kendrick. In order to do that, I need to take time with every line take time with God more mm-hmm. and like really sit and think about what purpose does an album have and not just, you know, throwing bars down. Absolutely. Now, we live in a world that is ran by social media as it seems, man, and everybody's mm-hmm. looking for quick, quick, quick content. Uh, reels, shorts, that kind of thing. For you as an artist in this day and age, how important is that social media when it comes to your journey as an artist? I think people mistake it for, they take it lightly, but social media is the key, especially since COVID, mm-hmm. since quarantine. Like, it's the key to reach people. Um, I take I started taking it more seriously recently since my studio broke down, and I, I really couldn't make music, wow. so cool. I focused more on the marketing. And it showed that uh, I can grab a song from two years ago and bring it back. So it yeah. really is important to learn how to market your music. It might be old to you, but it's new to everyone that's viewing it for exactly. the first time. Man, that's powerful. So what word of encouragement would you give to anyone that's on that fence and they're like, man, I don't know about this whole Jesus thing? I will let them know. Seek and find him. Go try everything out. <laughs> go ahead and find like go ahead and find out. Go right. deep with the truth. But at the end of the day, all the religions, everything else is going to point right back to God. So mm, That's deep. But well, look, I appreciate you so much for coming through to the podcast right here at the Heat Rose Festival. How was it, by the way? Lit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So look, thank y'all for tapping in. This is King Legend Talks, another interview. Thank you, man, again. Appreciate you, bro. Not possible.